Good evening. Uh, this is Pastor Shell. I want to uh, take this opportunity again to talk to you for a few moments, uh, speaking from my heart. The series of thoughts I'm going to bring to you on, on Thursday is uh, uh, just a few minutes about being uncomfortable. I think that the church is moving into an era that that we, our comfort uh, level is going to be really challenged, and the Holy Spirit's going to do that, but also uh, the darkness that surrounds us is going to cause us to become so uncomfortable. And we're going to have to decide, are we going to seek just to let that push that aside or accept that challenge and learn to be uncomfortable enough to st and still be the light of God? And that's what I'll, I'll sort of set the stage for that today. As darkness moves farther and farther from the light, uh, the divide becomes so strong and it becomes so obvious that, that there is the right, righteous way and there is the way that's not righteous. And the divide becomes bigger and bigger as darkness gets darker and the light of God will become lighter because Christ's truth never changes. It's, it's, always, it's always there and it's always truth and it will always prove to be the best thing that we can have going for us in our lives which puts the pressure or puts the accountability upon the servants of God. If God is dependent on me to be his servant, if he's dependent on me to be his light, then that means that I, I've, got to learn, I've got to learn to accept the responsibility of being a little bit uncomfortable. And I want to tell you that the church has become too comfortable with itself in, in America and probably worldwide, but especially in, in this country. We've become so comfortable just being coming to church and being able to say, I'm a Christian. Well, friends, I believe that's going to change. I believe we're about to be challenged in a way that we've never been challenged before. Now, let me, let me look at some scripture in John, the, the fifth chapter. And I'm just going to read a little bit and talk to you from, from this particular word. John 5 and verse 31. If I were to testify on my own behalf, my testimony would not be valid. Now, this is Jesus speaking. He says, if I were to tell you, it wouldn't be valid because I have no witnesses. And then he goes ahead and, and now keep that in mind because he says it would not be valid. So that means that he might be counting on somebody to validate the Christ that's within us. Okay. And here's what he says. But someone else. My testimony would not, be, would not be valid, but someone else is also testifying about me, and I assure you that everything he says about me is true. Now, he's referring to John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ, the one that testifies and says, that is, that is the Lord, that is Christ, that is the Lamb of God that's coming to redeem the world. That is Christ. He is the light of the world, John says. He says, he has also, uh, everything he says about me is true. In fact, you sit you send investigators to listen to John the Baptist and his testimony about me to see if it was true. Of course, I have no need of human witnesses, but I say these things so you might be saved. Now, here's a good verse. John was like a burning and a burning and, and shifting, shining light, and you were excited for a while about his message. But I have a greater witness than John, my teachings and my miracles or my power. Let me reread that. John was like a burning and a shining lamp, and you were excited for a while about his message. Now, I want to recall uh, in your mind, go back to your test, go back to the beginning of your grace story. Go back to the moment and the time that you came to know Jesus Christ, the excitement, the forgiveness, the freedom that you felt in your spirit. Oh my goodness, can you just picture that and feel that all over right now in your, in your life? Well, he, here, here's what he's saying. He says, John was like a burning and shining lamp, and you were excited when you heard what John was saying for a while. You were thrilled. And what's happened is we have come from our excitement and we've watered it down to where we've just become good church people. Just good attenders and good tithers, which we should do all of those things. But you see, the church is going to have to step up its game. We're going to have to step up because our accountability is greater than we've ever, ever expressed or thought about in our life. 
in the past. And so we've got to step forward now. John came and gave an exciting story. And everybody heard it and said, here he is. He's talking about something that, that's never happened that's about to happen. And it happened. It was Jesus, the Son of the living God, who came and dwelt among us and redeemed us at the cross. Well, that's what happened to each of us. Jesus came and miraculously wiped away our sins. And that excitement of being born again and loving God was, was so fresh in our hearts. We were so anointed of God. And then water down came. Water down time came. And, and that's sort of where we're at now. Well, if we're not going to wake up with what's happening right now, maybe the watered down Christian is going to remain watered down. And maybe he'll just be a Christian by name. Maybe he'll just identify with being a Christian nation, which we know it's not a Christian nation anymore. There has to be more to it. Where's the excitement that John said, that Jesus said, you were so excited. And I know every one of us started out our faith walk with great, great excitement. And so I would say to us, what makes us uncomfortable? What, what, is it, what are some of the uncomfortableness that we're facing? Maybe just the fact that God calls us his light? Does that make us uncomfortable? Because we, we know our shortcomings. We know our failures. We know when we study and pray, or we know when we don't study and pray. We know when we worship. We know when we don't. Are we perhaps uncomfortable with our own testimony? Maybe our own grace story is not, is not as emphatic and strong as it ought to be. Does that not cause us to be uncomfortable? Because we should feel some uncomfort. We should. Well, and yet the Lord says, you are my light. And so it, it seems to me like I think often uh, of the things that, that are going on in my life and I say, man, I'm, I, at times I'm uncomfortable. God calls me his light and I'm sort of slacking. Or, or do you feel like you're slacking at times? And so we feel that uncomfortableness and that's a good thing to feel uncomfortable with my walk with God and I want to become comfortable. And so the first step with that is recognizing that I am God's light. And he says to John, he says, John gave, gave, witness, gave witness of my work, gave witness that I'm the son of God and I'm coming to redeem the world. And you were excited. Folks, darkness will get excited when the light becomes brighter. When I become stronger with my grace story, when I become more willing to share it and more living to live it in front of them. And folks, it, it's here. It's here. I call your attention back to someone was telling me, I did not see this. Thank the Lord. I don't fool with that kind of stuff anymore. But the Grammy Awards or whatever, the, the most filthy song that, that you could, that you, I would just never imagine when it was told to me. I was shocked. Won the Grammy and it was filth. Darkness is getting dark. Now, well, here's what happens. When that becomes such a, uh, and, and they, I heard people on the radio applauding and saying, oh, how gutsy to be so filthy. And my friend, I would want you to feel uncomfortable with that. I think the Holy Spirit is more uncomfortable in us right now with us just going along with things than ever before. Let us not allow, allow the Holy Spirit to be uncomfortable in our lives because we're not speaking up. And we're not living the light bright enough that darkness is not comfortable being with us. We don't need to listen to that kind of stuff. We don't need to be associated with it. And my friend, we need to begin to speak out as we've never spoken out before. It's time to become uncomfortable. And it's okay to be uncomfortable with the works of darkness. We're not into a, a popularity contest. Jesus didn't come to be popular. Jesus came to redeem the world. Jesus came to be the light. You're not here to be popular on the earth. You're here to redeem the world. You're here to be the light and lead everyone to the Lord Jesus Christ. Another thought of being uncomfortable is this. It's uncomfortable now to tell people that Jesus is the only way to eternal life. And yet he says it very plain. He says, I am the truth, the way, and the life. I am the forgiver of sin, and sin cannot be forgiven except the shedding of the blood of Christ. We're uncomfortable saying that there's only one way to heaven, only one way to eternal life, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, it's okay to be uncomfortable. Just don't stay that way. Let our, let our uncomfortableness be, uh, overcome us to the point that we say, hey, I want to identify Jesus. I want to say that indeed he is. He is the only true way of eternal life. And so... Uh, our uncomfortableness will, will uh, I think it's going to get greater and greater, but that's okay. John had to be uncomfortable coming out of the wilderness and proclaiming there is one way, there is one man, there is one Savior, there's one Redeemer, there's one Baptizer. He had to be uncomfortable. 
The church needs to endorse the idea that it's going to be uncomfortable on the earth for the body of Christ in these last days. And we are in the last days. You're going to become more uncomfortable than ever before if you have a real true testimony of Christ. Now, if you don't, you're just going to float along. And I'm afraid that many people in Christ uh, or in many people that were in church, uh, this, this uncomfortableness, they're not going to speak up. They're not going to let their light shine. They're going to stay silent, and they're going to dwell away, dwindle away. I don't even know that they'll be back in the house of God to worship. I really don't. But I'm telling you, folks, those that are left, those that, that are able to say, I am uncomfortable with darkness, and I'm going to speak, un, I'm going to speak the light. I'm going to speak the truth. I'm going to say that Jesus is the only way to heaven, and we need to say that and express that. And let me say this in, in closing. If my character does not reveal the character of Christ, that needs to make me uncomfortable. If I'm acting more, if I'm enjoying things in the world more than I'm enjoying the things, the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of God, that needs to make me as a person of God uncomfortable. We need to examine us ourselves and say, am I comfortable with who I am? Because I am not. I'm not comfortable with who I am. I'm comfortable with who Jesus is in my life, and I want his character to be revealed in me more and more. And so every day, every day, I look for that opportunity to be more like Christ because I'm not comfortable being the way that I am. The church has to wake up and say, let's get out of our comfort zone. Let's get out of this business of just relaxing, relaxing, and just just praising and looking around and, and critiquing avenues to make, a, to make our praise brighter. I'll tell you what makes your praise brighter, the light of God. When the light of God is shining in our lives, my friend, the great story, your great story, will go forth and touch darkness. It will touch darkness. Darkness has only one fear, and you know what it is? It's the light of God. Darkness has only one person to fear now. It is you. Wherever you're at, you're, the darkness around you fears you because you are the light of God. Oh, what an awesome, and that does make us uncomfortable to know we have that kind of responsibility on us that we're the light. Wherever we're at, we are Christ's character. I challenge you, my friend, I challenge you to allow the character of Christ to become bigger, brighter, and sweeter, and more powerful in your life than you ever have. I challenge us to rise up to the occasion, be uncomfortable with who we've been, and seek the comfort of the Holy Spirit of who he wants us to be. Father God, I pray blessings upon the family of God today. I pray, Lord, that you would touch lives, touch families. Lord, go into every home, touch fathers, and cause them to be men of God. Oh, hallelujah. Touch women, Lord, and cause them to be mothers of God, servants of God, and, and children, Lord, to, to rise up and say, I believe in Jesus Christ. Father, heal the sick. Heal the sick, Lord. Those that are oppressed and those that are distraught, raise them up, O oh God, into your glory and help us as a church to accept the fact that we need to be uncomfortable with the way we are and seek the comfort of the Holy Spirit in each of our lives. Amen and amen and amen. Have a blessed weekend. See you Sunday. God bless you.